Um, I'm going to pass it back to Baloo, who show you how to do some Starry Night art projects. Thanks. Hi, everybody. We've um, cleaned up from our rocketry, and I wanted to go over a couple of the other art projects that we had suggested to go along with the Starry Night theme. Um, one of the things that we talked about was making a camp lantern. Um, and there are several different ways you could do it out of materials that hopefully you have around the house. Um, this one is made out of a plastic food container and it's just colored on the outside. Sorry, let's go this way. Colored on the outside with permanent marker. And you can put any sort of a light inside. Um, a glow stick will work or little battery powered LED lights and anything like that, it'd be good in a tent or in a blanket fort. Um, if you use a glass container like a mason jar, you can use a candle in it. Don't put the lid on it if you have a candle in it. Um, and certainly only use a candle if you've got an adult around to um, help you stay safe with it. But so permanent magic marker is one option. Um, one of our camping lanterns we made by recycling because we used our resources wisely. It's a plastic cup left over from getting a drink somewhere. And for this one, just on the computer, I printed out a picture um, of our uh, design for our camp patch. And you can put that inside your container and light it up again with a glow stick or LED lights. And that's another one that's safe to have inside a tent. Um, you could also do that by putting tissue paper on the inside of it um, or gluing tissue paper to the outside. Um, or you could draw a picture and anything, as long as it's a, a thin piece of paper, um, like printer paper, um, the light will show through and it'll light up your picture on the inside. Um, the messy but fun option is sort of the fairy light jar, and this is full of glitter and glitter glue. And you just want to paint glue on the inside and sprinkle glitter in there or paint glitter glue on the inside as much as you'd like. Try not to put it on too thickly because it does have a tendency to slide down the inside and pool on the bottom. And for it to be pretty, you want it to be up on the sides. Um, another option, I have a little jar here. This one we didn't talk about in our handout, but I'm going to demonstrate it real quick. Um, for this one, we're going to take a dark colored piece of paper and cut along it to sort of look like, um, in this case, I was doing like hills um, or, or mountains. You could do a city skyline if you wanted to, or make something that was just a pretty pattern that you liked. But then you get your container, in this case we're using a little mason jar, and put your skyline that you made down in the bottom of the jar. And then to make, make it so that the lights aren't stuck down behind the dark colored paper, I'm gonna take a little bit of cotton and stick it down in there. You don't really want so much that it shows, you just want to lift up the lights so that they're above the level of the paper, about like that. And then what I have, I'm going to pull it out of this other jar. I just have a string of little tiny LED lights. You see them all lit up there? And if you have little tiny ones like that and put them in the jar, it looks like a starry night up above the skyline that you made. Lock them in place there. See? And that's another cool little lantern you could have in your tent or your blanket fort. So, but what we're really here this afternoon to do is to um, draw or paint 
a starry night picture. And you guys can draw along with me. Um, it said in the instructions that we sent out to everybody that you could use whatever materials you wanted and you can. Um, personally, I'm going to be using some chalk pastels. Um, you could use crayons, you could use paints. It'll all work. And we're not, I'm not at least, trying to make an exact copy of Van Gogh's Starry Night, but um, we're trying to do something sort of in that impressionistic style. So give me a second to set up my other camera here so that you guys can see what I'm working on. And we will get rolling. Okay, I think that's going to do it. Put some tape down so I don't move it out of the range of the camera. Let's move it anyway. There we go. All right, so the first thing we want to do here is um, put sort of the horizon line in our picture. And I would suggest that you get kind of a light color because you're not going to want this to show when the picture's all finished. Um, but sort of put in at about, hmm, hang on a second, I have a bug, um, at about one third of the way across your paper. You want to have two thirds sky and one third foreground. Or if you've got more interesting things going on in the foreground of your picture, you could do two-thirds foreground and one-third sky. But because kind of the, the theme and the point of this is doing the starry night sky, I'm going to have less ground showing and more sky showing. And I think this time I'm going to do um, just maybe some hills. So I'm going to kind of sketch in some hills here like this. And so that's kind of going to be where my horizon line is. And then the first thing that we want to put in um, is the stars. So I like having an odd number of them, but we're going to just wherever you feel like it, put in some stars, but kind of leave one space open for the moon. Now in, in the famous picture, it's a big crescent moon like that. Um, not being a professional artist, I have tried some pictures today and my crescent moon keeps ending up looking like it has a black eye, but I'm gonna try one more time and we'll see how it turns out. So once you have the stars in there, it's time to start making your starry night sky. And you wanna start, um, so we've started with a light yellow and we're just going to work with a little bit darker yellow and you want to kind of just make lines that go around your stars, almost like dashed lines. And they don't, they don't have to be even and they don't have to be right up the edge. The cool thing with chalk is that we can blend this in later. Um, if you're working with markers or crayon, or even colored pencil, you can still do this, but you're gonna wanna kind of layer the colors one on top of the other. The important thing to get the effect of, um, of Van Gogh's painting is um, to sort of have these lines that show the movement through the sky. So there's that yellow, and then we're gonna go maybe one sort of a little bit darker yellow this time. And you, you kind of want the darker colors um, going on out surrounding, but you can also sort of make them in between. So like I've got the lightest color in the middle and then the next color yellow. And most of this next color I put outside of it, but some of it I put inside that last color of yellow. So you can sort of alternate the colors. Okay. 
After the yellow, we're going to go for kind of a light blue. And just remember that whatever you're doing, it's your picture. It doesn't have to look like mine. It doesn't even have to have the same things in it. You can do it however you'd like. Oh, more of that color blue and some of this one now. And as you start making the circles around, you can see that they're starting to connect to each other. A second. I forgot that I have a piece of tape on here. And that's not gonna work. So just keep adding darker colors as you go. That's a really dark one. And eventually, you just kind of want to fill in the rest of the spaces. And it's going to look kind of all not together. And we're going to fix that in just a minute. But you want to kind of have the movement the way the starry night picture has lines in it and you can see all the individual brush strokes. All right. So my next choice here, if you're using something like chalk, like I did one of these earlier today with sidewalk chalk out in front of my house, um, so chalk or pastels, anything like that, you can kind of make it blend a little bit. So for me, once I've got all this blended, you could do the same thing with paint. Um, probably with paint, I would have started by putting a background color in and letting it dry and then putting my stars on top of it so I'm not working with a white background. All right, this is a, oop, that's a crumbly one. So a little bit darker and a little bit darker because it's a night sky. That's why we've got stars, of course. Let's see if I can get a clean finger here. Let's go with, so with the chalk, I'm going to be able to go back over the color I already put down. I'm going over it with white to kind of make the, the stars blend at the center. And then once, because I don't, I don't want all that, all of the white space to show as much as it is. So now that it's kind of blended in a little bit, I'm going to go back. Not with that color though. I'm going to go back and make sure that I've got kind of all of those lines showing. I have to say that I don't love this one as much as the one I did earlier today. I'm gonna have to see if we can fix it up a bit. All right, now in the original painting, there's actually some places that are pretty dark that have some black in them. Um, 
we're going to go with a really dark gray this time, since a lot of my other colors are kind of light. I don't want to go all the way to black. But you can see where you get kind of the impressionistic look to it. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to try to not give my poor moon a black eye this time. It's supposed to represent the dark side of the moon. You know how sometimes you can see that when you look up in the sky at the moon. It's not full and you can see reflected light that lets you see the part of the moon that's not um, got the sun on it. All right, I think I'm about ready to quit on my sky before I make it all too smooshed together because we want the lines and the, like I, like I keep saying, the movement of the picture to show. So let's work on the foreground now. I think for this, I'm just gonna kind of have some hills that are all shadowed because it's a nighttime scene. And so I'm thinking, um, hmm, I'm thinking kind of a dark green, like maybe if they were covered in evergreen trees. Let's see what I've got here in the magic box. Not a lot of dark green. Okay, it's going to be a trick. All right, so we're going to start. I'm going to start on my hills with this really much brighter than I wish it was green. Now you could do whatever you want in the foreground. I chose to make hills. I did another one earlier today that has trees. I did one with hills and trees and a tent like our like our camp out patch. Um, the original painting has a little village in it. So you could do whatever you'd like. Um, I think that is well and truly green, but it looks way too bright. It looks like daytime. So I don't think we'd be seeing those stars. Um, so we need some shadows in there. Let's see what we can do. So I'm going with kind of a grayish brown color now over the green. Um, and because these are pastels, it'll kind of mix in. And to make it sort of go with the sky, I'm going to, again, let all of the, let all of the strokes of my pastel kind of show. So instead of, instead of a solid color, it's going to have a lot of lines in it. And this one that's far away will just kind of make dark. All right. Kind of went quick with that last part. I don't know if that's quite dark enough. What do you guys think? I kind of think I need a little bit of black to really make it be shadowed. I think I like that a little bit better. It darkened it up some. All right, hang on. Roll off the extra dust. Ooh, scary fingers. Um, I think I might be done. What do you guys think? Have you been doing a picture along with me? 
I hope if you do that you um, post it to Instagram or to um, or to Facebook so that we can see your artwork. I will show you a couple I did. Um, so there's this one. Hang on just a second. Let me get rid of this camera. There you go. There you go. So there's this one that we just did. And then earlier today, we did one. This one has more stars and some purple mountains. And it was in, it was also in chalk. Um, but this one I did in crayon. And if you look, it still has, it still shows a lot of white in the spaces, but it's got all those lines from just, you know, almost, almost scribbling like a little kid would, but you get all those lines and get sort of that impression of the starry night sky. Um, so anyway, anything you can do, I think would be really cool and I would love to see it. But other than that, I think we are done with arts and crafts. All right, say hi, Fuego Azul. Hi, I'm Fuego Azul from Troop 2898. Today we're going to make an origami star. Now, you think that in a safe there's important things, right? Well, in a safe, there are stars. The stars for days. But first, let's get started. Okay, so I know most of you do not have a perfect square but that's okay all you have to do is grab this fold it like a triangle nice and easily so that it looks like this that's a little flat now if you didn't bring sis scissors and you want and you saw the things that were posted about the origami and i didn't mention that there were scissors for that i'm sorry but it's okay. You don't need to leave immediately and blah, blah, blah. All you have to do is rip it gently. If you rip it too hard, you ran your whole entire square. Now, it's okay if it's not a completely perfect square. Because if it was a completely perfect square, we'd know it was a machine doing it. <laughs> Even I can't do an all that perfect square. So now that it's nice like this, don't unfold it because you're going to have to fold it anyway. Fold the things to the tip. Now, in case you were wondering, oh, we just fold these to the tip and then fold them and we're done. That's an origami fox. But really, what you need to do is crease it nicely with a nice little thumbnail. Do it nice and good because these are going to be your guidelines. Then you fold them in half, and you have to do it nicely, like I said before. No nice, no organ. But it's okay if your first star doesn't turn out very good. Okay? It can be anything, any way you like, from quirky to amazing. Now, you see these? You are going to have to tip it a little bit, so that on this side it looks like this, and on this side it looks like this. Now, see this little thing? It's going to have two flaps. Pull out the other one with a nice little crease that you've already made. Now, in case you've seen the instructions, you were wondering, what's, what's point A and what's point B? Well, I'll explain to you because right now, there are creases. Now, the creases will help you immediately. But once you fold it over, There'll be two creases, you can't see it. Hold on, okay. You won't be able to see it on my, on this, but once you see on yours that there's two, that's point A and point B. So you're gonna fold back, and then fold front, back and forth like a wave. So remember, waves go back and forth. That's why surfers, surfers love it. They go back and forth so much. Now, you, if you want a perfect star, you can add a sink, an extra step that makes it nice and perfect. And then do the same to the other side. 
but just be sure that you're 100% secure that you love your other side because if you want because for stars points are most of the time the same especially in drawings so that's why you have to do it like this and you have to tilt it a little bit see tilt it you gotta tilt it nice okay nice 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 fine line fine line fine game and there you have it origami style